I should mention this is a brief tangent back to the place where we came from, yeah. which is the base model uh, that I mentioned for OpenAI, which is before the reinforcement learning with human feedback. And you kind of give this metaphor of it being kind of like a psychiatric hospital. I like that because it's basically all of these different angles at once. Like you basically have the more extreme versions of human psyche. So the interesting thing is, well, I've talked with uh, folks in OpenAI quite a lot, and they say it's extremely difficult to work with that model. Yeah, uh, kind of like it's extremely difficult to work with some humans. The parallels there are very interesting because once you run the alignment process, it's much yeah. easier to interact with it, yeah. but it makes you wonder what the capacity, what the underlying capability of the human psyche is as in yeah. the same way that what is the underlying capability of a large language model. And remember earlier when I was basically saying that um, part of the reason why it's so prompt malleable is because of that alignment problem, that alignment work. Mm -hmm. It's kind of nice that the engineers at OpenAI have the same interpretation that, you know, in fact, it is that. And um, this whole concept of easier to work with, um, I, I wish that we could work with more diverse humans in a way, yes. and, and sort of that's one of the possibilities that I see with the advent of these large language models. The fact that it gives us the chance to both dial down friends of ours that we can't interpret or that are just too edgy mm -hmm. to sort of really truly interact with, where you could have a real-time translator. Just the same way that you can translate English to Japanese or Chinese or Korean by like real-time adaptation, mm -hmm. you could basically suddenly have a conversation with your favorite extremist on either side of the spectrum and just dial them down a little bit. <laughs> of course, not you and I, but uh, uh, you could uh, have friends that are, uh, who's a complete asshole, uh, but it's uh, a different base level. So you can yeah. actually tune it down to like, yeah. okay, they're not actually being an asshole there. Yeah. This is, uh, they're actually expressing love right now. It's just yeah. that they're, this is a- They have their they, way of, of doing that. And they probably live in New York, uh, <laughs> if we're just to pick a random location. So, so that, yeah, so you can basically layer out context. You can basically say, ooh, let me change New York to Texas and let me change, you know, uh, extreme left to extreme right or somewhere in the middle or something. Mm -hmm. And um, I also like the concept of being able to um, listen to the information without being dissuaded by the emotions. Mm -hmm. In other words, everything humans say has an intonation has some kind of background that they're coming from, it reflects the way that they're thinking of you, reflects the impression that they have of you. And all of these things are intertwined, but being able to disconnect them, being able to sort of, I mean, self-improvement is one of the things that I'm constantly working on. And being able to receive criticism from people who really hate you is difficult because it's layered in with that hatred. But deep down, there's something that they say that actually makes sense. Or if people who love you might layer it in a way that doesn't come through. But if you're able to sort of disconnect that emotional component from the sort of self-improvement, mm -hmm. and basically when somebody says, whoa, that was a bunch of bullshit, did you ever do the control, this and this and that, mm -hmm. you could just say, oh, thanks for the very interesting presentation. Uh, you know, I'm wondering, what about that control? Mm -hmm. Then suddenly you're like, oh yeah, of course, I'm gonna run that control, that's a great idea. Yeah. Instead of, that was a bunch of BS, you're like, Argh! you're sort of hitting on the brakes and you're trying to push back against that. So any kind of criticism that comes after that is very difficult to interpret in a positive way because it helps reinforce the negative assessment of your work. Mm -hmm. When in fact, if we disconnected the technical component from the negative assessment, then, you're embracing the negative, then the, you're embracing the technical component, you, you're gonna fix it. Whereas if it's coupled with, and if that thing is real, and, I, and I'm right about your mistake, then it's a, it's a bunch of BS, then suddenly you're like, you're gonna try to prove that that mistake does not exist. Yeah, it's fascinating to like carry the information. I mean, this is what you're essentially able to do here, is you carry the information in the rich complexity that information mm -hmm. contains. Mm -hmm. So it's not actually dumbing it down in some way. Exactly. It's still expressing it, but taking off. But you can dial the, 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 the emotional. The emotional side. Yeah. 
which is probably so powerful for the internet or for social networks. Again, when it comes to understanding each other, one of, like for example, I don't know what it's like to go through life with a different skin color. I don't know how people will perceive me. I don't know how people will respond to me. We don't often have that experience, but in a virtual reality environment or in a sort of AI interactive system, you could basically say, okay, now make me Chinese or make me South African or make me, you know, uh, Nigerian. Mm -hmm. You can change the accent. You can change layers of that contextual information and then see how the information is interpreted. And you can rehear yourself through a different angle. You can hear others. You can have others react to you from a different package. And then hopefully we can sort of build empathy by learning to disconnect all of these social cues that we get from like how a person is dressed. You know, if they're wearing a hoodie or if they're wearing a shirt or if they're wearing a, you know, jacket, you get very different emotional responses that, you know, I wish we could overcome as humans and perhaps large language models and augmented reality and deep fakes can kind of help us overcome all that.